I'll see all my babies, boys and girls, and everyone in between. I hope y'all are feeling chill. Bonjour. Oh, stop, birdie bird. Get out the fucking road. I'm feeling good. Thank you. Thank you. It's a gorgeous morning. I've been up since 4 a.m. It is 7:17 right now in the morning. Uh, got up early, knocked out my 100 squats, down my pills, down my freaking vitamins. I don't like, like, I only take two pills. <laughs> It's from my, uh, I think, just in case if you want to fucking know what kind of I take. What kind of drugs is kind of I take? I take uh, five milligrams of uh, prednisone and 150 micrograms of levothyroxine. The prednisone is to keep me alive because without it, I'd be dead. I've said this so many times at nauseum, but I'm going to repeat myself. And you know, the funny thing about repeating myself is... I don't know why I fret about that because when I watch the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, like Joe says stuff, the same thing ad nauseum that he's repeated for a hundred times over. But it's because, you know, some people may not have seen like your earlier stuff and they may not want to. They just want to stay current on what the hell you got. So that's why the hell I repeat myself. But so yeah, the the, the prednisone is just to keep me alive because I'm not getting a natural course of like energy and adrenaline to to my pituitary gland from from my adrenal gland because there's there's a sever in that connection and then I, I I'm very low in thyroid hormone as well so that's all I take I take my multivitamin and my other healthy health health stuff but I don't want to fucking talk to you about that shit today. What I want to talk about is, I was actually, you know, so I got up early and, you know, I charged my whip and then I went to have coffee with my good buddy Pete and Officer Juanita. So Pete was sharing with me this story about this woman that he knew, this friend, and uh, she's a very diminutive woman. And she was a gynecologist for a long time. That's what the hell she went to college for, you know, to, to learn that stuff. And then all of a sudden, woke up one day and she's like, I think I want to be a policeman or a policewoman, right? And he was like, wow, this is kind of like weird, just, you know, like a total 180. And I said, maybe she had a midlife crisis. And then I asked Pete, did you have a midlife crisis? And he's like, nope. And he said, you know, in fact, I think I'm beyond it. And I was sharing with him my midlife crisis that happened when I was freaking 30. But like midlife, well, like my babies, you know what? Because of my severe alcohol abuse, I didn't even see myself making it to freaking 30. I, I could see myself dying at 25 or maybe even earlier. But, so I wanna talk about that today, your midlife crisis, right? And it was funny because I told him, I said, I didn't have it till I was 30 because I came out of a 13 year drunken stupor. And it was just like, oh. There's this song called Time from Pink Floyd where David Gilmour is singing. And then one day you find 10 years had got behind you. No one told you when to run. You missed the starting gun. And it's just like, holy, it's in your freaking face, yo. Like for all you young ones out there, like yeah, you think like, when the hell am I gonna get through high school, man? High school is taking forever to get through. Like, yeah, but let me tell you something first freaking reality I freaking learned after I freaking dropped out of high school was that time goes by so much more freaking faster right after you get out of freaking high school man it's like it just speeds by and like once you get past that freaking high school racing gate it doesn't stop it like it seems like months go by like water spilling out of a freaking pitcher right and it seems so unfair it's, oh my God, I wish I could describe the clouds up ahead. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it, it, it does. It seems so unfair that like time just rips itself from you. And I feel like recently, like when I was talking about how, um, well, recently last year, when, um, when I first started living with my wife, presently my ex-wife, I feel like that's when I first started to freaking live, right? Because 
but I wasn't present at all, right? So I started learning how to be present when I was around her and everything, and that 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 made my eyes a lot more wider to take in a full 180 plus scope because I wasn't seeing life. I was seeing my day in day out as the same freaking thing. Like when you live like that, like beginning to end, like each day is the same as it started. You're not living life, man. Life is freaking taking you on a freaking ride, yo. And back in that sex chat vlog, I said this beautiful thing. I said, expand your human palate. And if you don't live outside of what the hell you know, that's all the hell you're ever gonna know. Is what, is what the hell you live in your little fucking town or your little fucking city, right? Or your state, yeah, your village even, taking it even smaller. This life is wonderful, man. And aside from the natural world, just knowing that every single sunrise is different, every single sunset is different, every, you know, everything is different, man. Don't, don't just think, okay, the sun rises, the sun sets, we orbit once, a year around the sun, you know, we have our four seasons. There's, there's so much more to that, man. And I think when we invite new people into our lives, that enriches our human experience. Like I said in that sex chat vlog, don't go to the same restaurant every freaking time and say, you know what I'm gonna have, my usual. A couple days ago, it was actually on New Year's Day. So I'm so I'm like I've been recording so much stuff, yo. Um, so it, it happened on New Year's Day, right? And uh, the barista over at the Starbucks, pretty young lady named AJ. Shouts out to AJ, you gorgeous thing. She's like, Good "Morning, welcome to Starbucks. Happy New Year!" And I'm like, "Hey, AJ, Happy New Year!" And uh, she's like, "What can I get for you today?" I said, "I want a drink. Give me your favorite thing that you drink." from here but don't tell me what the hell it is and she's like wow right so when she finally finished it and it handed it to me she's like I hope you enjoy it and then I took the first couple of sips I looked at her through the window and I was sitting down with my buddy Pete and I just went like this that's awesome and then you know like um and then I a couple of weeks before I sat down with my therapist you know I'm so glad that I was able to see her in person she offered me chocolate what was it? Like close to like the middle of the day, right? And because I have such impulse control, I would usually just say, nah, nope, nope, no thank you. But you know what? I hadn't seen her since freaking June, right? And then um, I said, sure, doc. And she's like, which one? And I took from the Godiva box of chocolates because Godiva, like you can't compete with that, right? So she's like, which one do you want? She said, you know, it tells you like which one it is and I was like no 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 I don't want to know I, I don't want to I want to be surprised man I'm 52 man going on 13 <laughs> you know what I mean like I want to be surprised like I don't I, don't give me the same thing try something new man like there is a plethora of decisions of options out there that you can make for yourself right and we all have our favorites right there's there's no mystery to that either, but you know what? Try something new. It's a new year. Every day is a new day. Try something new, right? So that way, when you reach your midlife crisis, or when you get to like your 60s or your 70s, you won't be filled with that. Ah, oh, man, I didn't take a bite out of freaking life. Life took a bite out of me. Well, yeah, man. You got to do that when you're young. That's why I like... I love it when I hear stories of, you know, kids straight out of college and they're going to go freaking journey across the U.S. or backpack across freaking Europe or something like that. Good. You got to do that shit when you're young because a lot of people, when they get older in their 40s and their 50s, they get so set in their ways and they get scared. They get scared to freaking adventure, you know, to venture out there to see something new. So you could postpone or you could totally push off or totally dismiss your midlife crisis. And I think midlife crisis, essentially, it's a frame of mind, right? Before I end this, I wanna say something. I was talking to my mom a couple days ago, and, you know, I said, I said, wow, dad's real quiet today, yeah? She's like, well, cause he's mad at me. 
she's like, oh, why? Why now? <laughs> and she goes, she says, um, oh, because, you know, I was cooking and he wanted to show me this thing in the newspaper and stuff. And uh, uh, and then he came back a couple minutes later and said, oh, hey, look, look at this thing. And she, he tries to show her something else in the newspaper. And he does it one more time. And she's like, honey, I'm cooking now, right now. And so I, like, he kind of got put off by that. And he went up to her and told her, why are you so mad at the world? I said, he saying that to you? What about him? And she's like, well, you know, that's what happens when you get old. I said, uh-uh, not me, man. She said, yeah, well, wait and see. I said, no. I said, you know why? Because I'm going by your example that you're saying that that's how the fuck you get when you get old. No, man. Like, you just showed me how not to be. You've been showing me how not to be my whole freaking life. You've been showing me how to, you know, close up my feelings and shit like that. And I knew in my mind and in my heart of hearts, that's not the life I want to freaking live. Where I'm not expressive and I'm not reaching out to people. So, like, that's why I always see that positive and the negative, right? So, like, you know, people have, like, a really, like, warped way of freaking seeing shit. And I'm like, not me, man. I'm going to do things different. Like, because you're showing me by your freaking example that you're, like, all sour with life, you fucking sour puss. You know, you don't know how to fucking smile. You don't know how to engage. You don't know how to lock freaking high, you know, you don't know how to lock eye contact with other people. Come on, man. Come on. Seriously. So, with that said, I want to thank you also very much for being here, tuning in, chiming in. You know, we have these wonderful, enriching uh, interactions, yeah? Take care, much love. Hey, what's up, Golden Plover, baby? Uh, until I see you all again. babies. Reach out, speak up, and speak out, and please slow down and stop for wildlife. I'm stopping for you, baby. You know I care about you golden plovers. You guys are so special. I've always had like this huge piece in my heart for golden plovers and sandpipers. They're so cute how like when they when when you're at the beach in the early morning and how they like the, the way they scurry across the freaking sand like that and they leave like their footprints, right? So cute. That's it. Ciao.